So welcome back. For today's class, we are going to be looking at the Quinn C clause key uh, minimization technique, which is also referred to as uh, the tabular uh, method. The Queen MC clause key uh, minimization algorithm is a method used to simplify Boolean uh, expressions. So it is uh, particularly or especially useful for reducing the number of terms and literals in a Boolean uh, function, resulting in a more uh, you know, efficient uh, representation that can lead to smaller and faster digital uh, circuits. The technique is based on the two uh, major concepts, uh, the concepts of uh, prime implicant, and then uh, what, we, what we refer to as essential uh, prime implicant. Uh, we are going to see uh, some uh, demonstration uh, based on that, right? So we said the technique is uh, basically based on a prime implicant and what? Essential uh, prime uh, implicant. So the minimization uh, procedure, the procedure for optimization is as follows. Uh, we have at step one. So what you'll be doing in step one is to describe the individual main terms of the given uh, expression by their equivalent uh, binary uh, numbers, right? So in step two, uh, we are going to form a table by grouping uh, numbers with equivalent number of ones in them. That is, uh, uh, you might have a situation where you will not have ones uh, based on what is given. So we have a group of uh, no ones, that's a group of zero. Then we have the group of ones, that is where we have uh, ones appearing. And then uh, a group of uh, two ones, uh, three ones, four ones, depending on uh, the availability or the number of ones uh, present in uh, the given uh, problem, right? So in the step two, we are going to form a table by grouping the numbers with equivalent number of ones, just like I've explained uh, in them. So first number with number of one, then numbers with one, one, and then numbers with two ones, uh, like that, right? So in step three, uh, we are going to compare each number in top group with each mean term in the next lower group, right? We are going to be seeing some example. So if the two numbers are the same in every position, but one, uh, we place a check sign to the affected position of both numbers to show that they have been what paired or what? Covered. Then uh, we enter the newly formed number in the next column uh, where we end up with a new uh, table. In step four, uh, using uh, the previously obtained uh, table, that is in step three, we form a second table and repeat the process again until no further pairing is what possible. So on second repeat, uh, we compare the numbers to numbers in the next group that have the same uh, x position. In step five, uh, terms which were not covered are the same are the prime implicants and uh, are odd and added together to form a final uh, function, right? Uh, let's see an example. Uh, for instance, simplify the Boolean expression using the Queen MC clause key and method. Uh, y into bracket of A, B, C, D is equal to uh, summation of the mean terms. Uh, 0, 1, 3, 7, 8, 9, 11, and uh, 15. So let's see how this can be solved. Uh, but in this case, uh, using uh, the Queen MC clause key minimization uh, technique, right? So uh, remember we said the, the method or the technique itself, which is referred to as a tabular method, is based on two important terms. The first one, remember we said, is a uh, prime implicant, right? prime implicant and then the second part is uh, the essential prime what implicant right so for us to get the essential prime implicant so which means we need to know uh, what the prime implicant is so um let's see how what these terms uh, refers to so uh an implicant is nothing but group of ones and then the prime implicant are, are the largest possible group of ones and then the essential prime implicant, uh, it is an implicant, it is a prime implicant rather, it is a prime implicant that contains a main term that cannot be combined in any other what way, right? So let's demonstrate or uh, explain these uh, concepts, right? Especially the prime implicant and then the essential uh, prime implicant. So let's have... Um, four variable uh, came up, 
to demonstrate uh, this concept of uh, prime implicant and essential what prime uh, implicant. Let's have our table for existing uh, variables, cells, to respire form. Remember, we are dealing with four variables, right? So uh, let's assume we have our ones uh, in this position, right? We have a one here. We have a one here. Let's assume we have it at this point. We have it at this point. And at this point, at this point, and then lastly at this point, right? Now, the idea of the prime implicant, uh, now if you look at this uh, grouping or this cell, this came up, uh, the largest possible group of worms that we can see, uh, we can have it at this point. Uh, this will be our first uh, prime implicant, right? Prime implicant. Then another largest possible group of ones could be this, should be this, and then we have our second PI, right? And then uh, another largest possible, another group of one is this, uh, right? Also have another PI, and then we can also have another group of one here. Uh, that gives us another PI. Then we have another one here, right? another pi and then lastly we have another pi right so from this pi uh let's see which one uh, is the essential remember for the pi we said the largest possible group of one and then the, for the essential prime implicant we said uh it is uh, a prime implicant that contains a main term that cannot be combined in any other way right so it's a prime implicant. So uh, if you look at this group uh, given, uh, we can see that um, we have uh, our first essential prime implicant, right? Essential PI, because it contains a mean time that cannot be combined this in any other word form, right? In any other way. And then the second es essential prime implicant is at this point, right? Uh, we have it this way, essential PI, right? Because it contains this mean time that cannot be combined in any other word. So there are two essential prime implicants, so this and then uh, at this position, right? Yes, so um, uh, what we need to do in solving uh, the minimization problem using the concept or the algorithm, the tabular method or the Quinn C plus K algorithm uh, is first thing first, we need to uh, represent uh, the given uh, main times. Yeah. Uh, we need to have the uh, binary uh, table where you represent the mean, the given mean times in their binary number equivalent. And then uh, we have the groups in terms of group of ones, uh, starting with group of no ones, and then group of one ones, uh, two ones, three ones, depending on uh, the number of ones uh, we have, right? So let's quickly have our first table uh, that has to do with the binary equivalent of what was given in terms of uh, the four variables in the questions, right? So let's quickly uh, do that. Have uh, the binary equivalent table before we begin the first step, right? So we have the table. Of course, uh, we're dealing with four variables. 
four variables right so we have a we have b c and what d right so based on the variables that we are given we have one two three four five six seven eight so eight of them uh this is one two three four five six seven then the last one eight so uh this will present our zero we can have our zero this point right this is one this is three uh seven this is eight this is for nine eleven and then uh, the last one which is 15. so let's uh, have the individual uh, binary uh, equivalent so at point zero at the number zero so at the binary equivalent is given to be zero 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 and then what zero binary one is zero 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 and then one uh binary three so it's given to be what this is zero zero one one binary number seven is zero one 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 right binary number eight should be one zero 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 right binary nine is given to be one zero zero what one binary eleven is given to be what one zero one one and then binary fifteen is given to be one 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 and then one right so that's the first thing you need to uh, put into consideration as far as the queen mc clause key algorithm is constant right so let's have our uh, in step one uh, in step one we are going to form the group in terms of how many number of ones we have so this is step one right so we are going to have our groups depending on number of ones or no ones that we have right so we have the group we have the group the main terms right the main terms the main terms that are involved in that grouping then we have the binary what binary representation of the given what main term so in terms of the variables four variables a b c and what and d so starting with the group of zeros right so uh, so the main term of course is what m0 and then the binary equivalent or the binary mutation is 0 0 for the four variables you have it this way right we are done with this for zeros then we have for the group of ones so let's see for the group of ones we have m1 right with one one so in one which is this the binary representation is zero 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 and then what one so let's see uh at m8 those ones with individual ones we have m1 and then uh if you look around we have it at m8 so m8 will be in this group right and then is uh, the binary equivalent is uh, given to be what one zero zero 
And then what? Zero. Right? So this will form our group of one. So you check again. Uh, I think we just have that at M1 and M8. Right? Uh, we can still check and see. Uh, I think it's just M1 and M8. M8. So we'll go to the second group, the group of twos. That is uh, the ones with two ones. So the ones with two ones, we have uh, M3, right? So we have M3. And then the binary representation is what? Zero. Zero. One, one, right? So M3 with two ones. So two ones at M3. So let's see, two ones, two ones at M9, right? So we have M9. M9, the binary combination is, um, or the binary representation, M0, 0, and then 1. So let's see, is that all with two ones? M3, two ones, um, M9, two ones. So that's all we have for the group of two. You go to the group of threes, three ones. <clears throat> so for three ones, we have it at um, M7, right? So M7 is, uh, the binary representation is zero. One, one, one. So M7 with three ones, three ones at M11 again. So we have M11. So M11. The binary representation is what? One, zero, one. One, right? So you could also check. Um, I think the for the three ones we have it at M eleven, M seven, right? I know any other place beside M eleven. So uh, we have this, and then the next group is the group of fours, with ones with four. So we have that at just uh, M fifteen. Right, M15, and then it's what? The binary representation is one, 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 and then one, <clears throat> right? So in group two, in step two rather, so we are going to have the matched pairs. What we refer to as the matched pairs. So what do you mean by the matched pairs? So we are going to combine zero, and then we match it uh, versus one so that we can have um, <clears throat> so we are matching m naught right with m1 m naught and then what m8 right that is for zero uh, matching one uh, we have m naught m1 m naught m8 right and then uh, we are going to also have uh, another uh, instance, another group by saying zero matching uh, two. That is one matching uh, two, right? And then we are going to have what? M1, M3, right? M1, M3. And then we have a match piece, M1 matching M9. Right, M1, M3, M1, M9, and then we're also going to have M8, M3, and then M8, M9. Right, that is it for the matching of one and two, and then we are going to also have two matching three right so that we are going to have m3 m3 
Arching M7. And then we are going to have what? M3. Arching M... M11. Right? Same thing, we are going to have what? M9. Arching M7. M7. And then M9. Matching what? M what? M11. Right? Similarly, uh, we are going to match, we are going to have um, T3 matching what? 4. So that we have what? M7. M15. Right? Uh, M11. And then M what? And 15. So assuming we have um, another grouping uh, at 5, so that will be 4 versus 5, and then we'll match that up, and then we'll obtain uh, the values, right? So the idea of matching in step 2, uh, the idea of matching, so you match the number of variables uh, so that uh, only uh, the binary combinations should change in only uh, one instance. So if more than one uh, variable is changing, if more than one of the uh, binary representation is changing, we you discard that, right? You discard that. If more than one of uh, the instances of the bin binary representation is changing, uh, we are going to discard that. But if it's just, uh, just an instance that is changing, uh, you present that... Uh, you present that with a dash, right? And then uh, you move to the next uh, uh, grouping or the uh, combinations. So uh, in the next uh, class, we are going to see how uh, uh, continue that in the step two, where uh, we'll have uh, the match uh, pairs. See you in the next uh, class.